we'll be talking about the evolution of the skyscrapers in New York City and why their shapes keep changing. The reason will blow your mind. But before we get into the nitty gritty, please take a moment to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Some say that a city's signature skyscraper reveals much about its character. The Chrysler Building in New York previously represented the clash of business with art and arrogance. Of course, several other buildings in the city have since surpassed the Chrysler as the tallest, but it remains a prominent symbol of the skyscraper at the one location where the term is most commonly used. At this point, it'll be obscured by a crop of shiny new office buildings. Nonetheless, because of these spectacular buildings, it has been able to expand its territory at a steady clip, thereby accommodating the millions of people and businesses that want a piece of the action. New York is nothing if not for its skyscrapers. Throughout the city's history, many magnificent structures have grown, each one an original creation that reflects the circumstances and influences that gave rise to it. New York's buildings are like a mirror, reflecting the city's history and future. They're symbols of its history and quiet agents of its future. It's not just that they created the building, but that they also made this incredible metropolis. The 1920s, the extravagant skyscraper. Joseph Campbell famously observed that a city's tallest building reveals a lot about the culture and priorities of that place. During the Middle Ages, it was frequently the cathedral's tower. It served as the political palace in towns of the 18th century and was the workplace for New Yorkers in the 1920s. Skyscrapers were the material manifestation of capitalism and the American dream. The decade known as the Roaring Twenties was the one distinguished by opulence and prosperity, and it saw the shift of global leadership from London to New York. As a result, the Chrysler Building was erected as a symbol of the city's arrival and the United States' unprecedented prosperity. The Chrysler Building by Van Allen and the Manhattan Co. Building, today known as 40 Wall Street, were both commissioned by Severance and Van Allen, respectively. They were both determined to be the ones to construct the world's highest building. Each side's architects were stealing from each other or leaking information about their rival skyscrapers while they were being designed and built. In a last-ditch effort to compete with Chrysler, the Manhattan Co. Building began adding stories above the capacity of its foundations. After its completion in 1930, the skyscraper held the title of the world's tallest for all of one month. Walter Chrysler intended for his skyscraper to be a symbol of richness and elegance, but when the New York Stock Exchange crashed and the Great Depression began, no one was interested in such things. Even after all the work that went into making it the highest skyscraper in the world, the Chrysler Building only retained the distinction for 11 months when the Empire State Building was built, also in 1930, but in an amazingly short amount of time. After then, for 40 years, New York didn't build any new record-breaking buildings since the city's attention was diverted elsewhere due to the Great Depression and World War II. The 1960s, the modern skyscraper. It's safe to say that 1960s New York was a different place altogether. Strikes, protests, and even some violence occurred. This was a period of intense upheaval and revolutionary change. The moment had come for a change. The time had come to move away from architectural ornamentalism and intricacy. Simplicity and utility were now prized above all else. The Japanese-American architect Minaro Yamasaki was chosen to design the World Trade Center in 1962 in an effort to revitalize the then-struggling Lower Manhattan. He proposed two massive twin towers, a pair of gray monoliths that represented an almost extreme version of modernism. They lacked the step-backs and features of the city's Art Deco towers and instead featured sleek straight lines, assertive verticality, and a minimalist aesthetic. These structures originated in an era when New York looked substantially different. Because of his fear of heights, Yamasaki made the windows in the towers only 45 centimeters wide. Even though they only covered 30% of each structure from a distance, they seemed like solid metal sheets. Yamasaki developed sky lobbies on the 44th and 78th levels of each tower to alleviate this problem. The number of required elevator shafts on the floor plate decreased significantly because of this. The construction of one of these sky lobbies allowed the buildings to rise 110 stories above the city below, but it also created a mini-commute for the people who worked on the upper floors. 
These skyscrapers would not exist without the development of structural engineering as well. Like in a conventional skyscraper, the towers supporting columns were both within and outside the structures. Because of this, each tower is effectively a box within a box, with horizontal trusses connecting the boxes on each floor. There were no columns on the floor itself, thus the inside was one big open office. In 1973, after years of anticipation, the towers opened their doors to a populace that had grown tired of them. It is said that public transportation was sacrificed to fund the project, which came to the equivalent of $4.5 billion in current dollars. The 1980s, the glitzy skyscraper. Risk-taking, overindulgence, and flashy fashion were hallmarks of the 1980s. Subtlety went out the window, as it was an era like that. You had to muster up all your courage if you intended to do anything. The austere, minimal lifestyle of the 1960s was giving way to a more ornate architectural aesthetic. This was a time of trying new things when seemingly incompatible aesthetics and concepts were encouraged. While the real estate market was boosted by the Wall Street boom and declining unemployment, the city was also witnessing record crimes and skyrocketing murder rates. This was a land of stark contrasts, where extraordinary riches and opportunities coexisted with extreme poverty and brutality. It was the city's tallest glass building at 202 meters. Its interior pink-white veined marble, mirrors, and brass gave the building an unmistakable 80s vibe, and its bronze exterior is a dead giveaway. It houses some of the most expensive apartments, offices, and stores in New York City, as well as a waterfall that is 18 meters high and a rumored gold toilet. The 2000s, the existential skyscraper. Hearst Tower, one of the few notable skyscrapers constructed at the time, stands at a modest 182 meters above the city. When everyone else was trying to predict the future of skyscrapers, Foster & Partners was busy building one from the past. The company made the deliberate decision to continue building despite the post-9-11 environment. They'd done it before at the British Museum and the Reichstag, successfully blending modern and historical architecture. They were now reaching new heights with this method. Compared to comparable buildings, the Hearst Tower's design made adding a new floor on top of it somewhat simpler. The original design for the historic building called for at least seven more stories, and some sources even go as high as 20. More than twice as many elevator shafts as one would expect in a building of that size were there. It reached a symbolic height of 1776 feet, which was a nod to the year America got its independence. From there, you could see a pair of sunken waterfalls where buildings used to be, and the sound of the falling water drowned out the noise of the city and gave you time to think. New York was starting to move on, but it would never forget what had happened. In a way, rebuilding at Ground Zero started a new chapter and gave the city a soft green light to start building tall again. The high rise was back, but for a new time. The 2020s, the billionaire skyscraper. Jazz and the Great Gatsby were popular in the 1920s, but there's a new class of billionaires in the 2020s. The top 1% of the top 1%. There has never been so much money for so few people, and all that money needs a place to go. Here is Billionaire's Row. Developers on 57th Street spent years buying the air rights for the properties around their small lots so they could build buildings tall enough to offer views of Central Park and with enough floor space to make a profit. So, they were able to put those rights on their sites and build taller towers, which helped keep some nearby buildings from blocking their views. All of this led to 111 West 57, the thinnest building in the world. The building is 435 meters high, but it's only 18 meters wide. It has very expensive apartments and tries to look back to the past. The classic stepped shape is back, and so is the terracotta, which hasn't been used much on towers since Art Deco. The future. A new wave of skyscraper construction is coming to New York. There are currently under construction no less than four additional super talls, bringing the total amount of new real estate on this island to almost 11 million square feet all because of one choice made in 2017, rezoning Midtown East. A quarter of a million people are employed there, and there are a large number of Fortune 500 corporations, although the building itself is somewhat outdated. More than 70 years have passed since its typical building was constructed. 
In response, the city council adopted a drastic rezoning or rewriting of the rules that would allow for much larger and denser office structures. Developers would have to pay into a new district improvement fund to build out a pedestrian and public transportation system in exchange for the increased density. Subway upgrades at Grand Central Terminal are responsible for some of this. We've been thinking the same thing, and many of the new skyscrapers being built as a result of this rezoning were actually conceived of for a totally different world than the one we find ourselves in now. One that doesn't even exist. The 270 Park Avenue building is a newer, denser type of skyscraper, the domino-like structure of the 423-meter high-rise. The project, which is slightly taller than the Twin Towers in 1973, is a throwback to the iconic stepped design of the classic New York skyscrapers. This massive skyscraper, at 480 meters, will rise across the street from the Chrysler Building and completely block out the New York icon, the famous structure from the beginning of our story that has now been superseded. Consumed by that now relentless race for the skies it helped start almost a century ago. That's all for today. Thanks for joining. Let me know what you think about this video in the comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Until next time.